Shimano is one of the biggest bike companies in the world. And most of us probably ride a bike with parts made by a Japanese bike company. That's because its products are efficient, reliable, and innovation led. In short, the stuff just works. And it's hard to imagine a world without Shimano. But it wasn't always this way. In this video, we'll look at the rise of this plucky outsider, how it beat its biggest rival and became the most dominant bike brand in the world, as well as highlighting some innovations that have led us to where we are now, and also some flops. As a reminder, that no bike company, big or small, is perfect. The story begins in 1921, when Shota Bureau Shimano was running a small bicycle repair shop in Sakai City, Japan. Shimano was an ambitious 26-year-old and the first product that came out of a small workshop was the freewheel. It wasn't until the 1950s that Shimano started on its road to success and developed its first gear changing product, including a three-speed internal hub gear. At the same time, the company was also investing in cold forging manufacturing technology, which would later become a pillar of its expertise and manufacturing prowess. Fast forward to the 1970s and things get really exciting because in 1971, the company launched the famous Crane Rear Derailleur, a product that truly set Shimano on its path to future road cycling market dominance. Except the reaction at the time wasn't all that generous because in the 70s, there one company that really dominated the road cycling scene, Campagnolo. The Italian company was a market leader and famous for quality and durability and unseating them as a favorite in a pro cycling scene would be a tough challenge for Shimano. Yet the early derailleur shows Shimano's focus on innovation. It was no mere copycat. It was beautifully made from aluminium with a dropped parallelogram design that kept the pulley wheels parallel to the sprockets. Plus it was lightweight and that mattered to Schwinn, a giant US bike brand at the time who chose to fit this product to its bikes. And the battle between Shimano and Campagnolo truly started in earnest. Skip ahead to 1980 and the first Durace product arrived in the world. It was called Durace AX7300 and it was a masterpiece of development and refinement and also showed the first index gearing system. But while it wasn't a commercial success, it did force ab companies to play catch up. The name Durace also showed the company's ambitious streak. Dura came from the aluminium alloy used to construct the derailleur, while Ace were meant to conjure up images of the top, the best performance. Through the 80s and 90s, Shimano continued its relentless march for innovation and improvements and grabbing more market share. The second generation Dura Race 7400 group set gave the world the groundbreaking Shimano Index System, SIS for short, which pushed friction shifters into the history books. During the 80s, Shimano would also seize the opportunity to enter the new and fast growing mountain bike market. Dior XT was the first offering and brought its SIS index gear technology from road bikes to off-road bikes. Mountain bikes were booming in the late 80s and Shimano products were well placed to meet this new demand for products that could stand up to the abuse of off-road riding. Shimano would also launch a group set that is hugely popular today, Ultegra, which sits below Durace, bringing Durace technology to a lower price point for the first time. Meanwhile, Durace won the first of many Grand Tours, with Annie Hampton winning the Giro d'Italia, a tough edition of the Tour of Italy. And in a market where race victories and race success really could sell bikes and products, this was a big step for Shimano. Into the 1990s, and Shimano had clearly risen from a plucky outsider to a company of dominating the cycling market, both in mountain biking and road cycling. But with such success, there were critics, primarily aimed at Shimano's insistence that bikes integrate all of their components to control how well their product perform, with complaints of it being a marketplace bully. The 21st century sees Shimano at the top of its game. The company continues to dominate the cycling industry with its cutting edge technology and unrivaled quality. And by now, 
Shimano products are being used by more and more professional cyclists and teams in the toughest races in the world, from a Tour de France to the Olympic Games, all helping to cement the company's reputation as the best in the business. The innovations were frequent and came thick and fast. Dual control for road bikes, 8, 9, 10 and 11 speed shifting. XTR mountain bike group set is launched and aimed at racing professionals. And they also launched the hugely popular Shimano Pedaling Dynamics, SPD for short, for mountain bikers and SPD SL for road bikes. Two pedal systems that even today are still hugely popular. The list of innovations and products are too long to list in a video, but one innovation really stands out. Index STI shifting, a big moment in Shimano's history and a product that really sets it on a course of dominance. Before we had index shifting, something we all take for granted today, you had friction shifting. This was non-index gear changing, where you had a lever, usually on a down tube, that you had to move just the right amount to get the right gear. It was definitely an art form. But with the introduction by Shimano of index shifting, that's all changed overnight. It was a seismic technological advancement that really cemented Shimano's future. The next move was moving the shifters from the down tube to the brake levers with dual control. Now you can change gear and brake at the same time without taking your hands off the handlebars. It truly was a revolution. Shimano would evolve and refine its mechanical shifting to a state of near perfection. And then in 2011, everything changed. Shimano introduced its first ever electronic group set, DI2, which is now into a third generation and available at three price points, 105, Ultegra and Durace. It's worth pointing out that Shimano wasn't the first manufacturer to offer an electronic shifting group set. Mavic got there a few decades before, but Shimano was the first company to get it right and to make it as popular as it has become today. A popularity that has definitely taken some people by surprise, given the last 50 years of Shimano's market share has been based on making the best mechanical shifting group sets available. While DI2 was clearly a hit, not all products in the back catalogue were that well received. Famous bloopers include the Biopace chainrings and dual control mountain bike flappy paddle shifters and rapid rise rear derailers. Those are best forgotten. But today, Shimano is clearly the dominant component manufacturer and its old rival, Campagnolo, is sadly a shadow of its former glory days. So from humble beginnings in a small repair shop to a worldwide leader in the cycling industry, Shimano's story is one of determination, innovation and never ending pursuit of excellence. The company has clearly come a long way in the last 100 years. I can't wait to see what the next 100 years will bring for the humble bicycle.